Grow Up Wild. We're gonna do a five minute video and we're gonna talk about the questions we ask when we're setting up a company, okay? And I do this, unfortunately I do this a thousand times a month. It seems like a hundred times a day. So here we go. So the first question I always ask is, what are you gonna be doing? Okay, and literally, like I wanna know, like what are you gonna be selling? Is it a good, is it a service? Are you manufacturing, are you importing, are you distributing? Is it online, is it physical? So let's talk a little bit about the business model. Now, I'm not, I don't really care so much because quite frankly, I'll work with customers in almost any industry, uh, but I wanna have an idea of, is it gonna be a brick and mortar? Are we gonna have employees? Um, and if we are, are they gonna all be in one place? Are they gonna be spread out? And so uh, let's just use an example. The customer is going to be selling custom suits in Miami and I'm like, okay, so they're gonna have a physical presence in a place. Um, and in this case, it happens to be Miami, Florida. So that's question number one. Question number two is where, okay? So the where kind of lends off question number one. So in this case, in my story, physical in Miami, so Florida. Um, and the reason I ask that question is because believe it or not, we can set up companies in all 50 states. So I was talking to a guy yesterday, he was in Washington state um, and he was gonna be setting up a logistics business. And I asked him the where, and he goes everywhere because logistics, he might be arranging or brokering um, shipping from literally Washington DC to Washington state and everything in between. Um, and so for him, I, I dug a little deeper and he's like, well, you know, if I expand, I will probably have an office with employees in Washington state. So the nexus, which is the word we use, is probably closer to Washington State than it is to anywhere else. But there are examples where maybe it's truly gonna be online and it's gonna be digital and maybe we'll have employees in South America or, or wherever. And so in that case, maybe we'll look at other states such as, okay, I'm sitting in Miami, I'm gonna hire a bunch of workers in Colombia, my customers are gonna be everywhere, so maybe I'll set up a Delaware company. And that's important because we can set up companies in other states. Now, if we have too many ties to a specific place, like let's say we set up the Delaware company, but we got a lot of stuff going on in Florida, then we might have to also register the Delaware company in Florida, which means that we'd have to pay two fees every year to keep it in good standing. All right, so the third question I ask is how many owners? Now, this is really important because there's a very different path if it's just one owner than it is if there's gonna be lots of owners. So um, the guy in Washington State, it was husband and wife. And I was like, well, do you guys have a prenup? He said, no. I'm like, okay, well, you know, any company you create after you get married and you don't have a prenup is probably gonna be a marital asset. I'm not a family law attorney, but I, I know enough to be dangerous. And in, in this case, and also husband and wife, it's a little different. Like, do we need to negotiate an operating agreement between husband and wife? Um, operating agreement, just so you guys know, is the contract for an LLC. It's the equivalent of bylaws or a shareholders agreement for a corporation. And the rule of thumb is you, you only need those documents, those contracts in three circumstances, in my experience. So the first uh, circumstance is if the government is asking for it. So let's say the guy in Washington state is asking for a government contract. The government might say, show us your operating agreement. And he's like, well, I'm a single member LLC. I don't have an operating agreement. And they'll say, okay, we'll go get one. And he'll call me and I'll make an operating agreement. Also when there's immigration matters. So whenever we're doing a visa and we're setting up the company for maybe an investor, the government, the in that case immigration, they're gonna ask for an operating agreement. Uh, and then they wanna see it because they wanna see that the company's legit and they've got all their ducks in order. So the second circumstance where you might need one of those contracts is if you're getting financing, you're asking a bank for money. And a bank very often, Wells Fargo will say, okay, show us your operating agreement. Again, the guy who's a single member LLC calls me up, he says, I don't have one of those, I never needed it before. And I'm like, here, I'll make it for you. And the third circumstance and probably the most important is when there are multiple people. So for example, in this law firm, I have a partner and my partner and I have a contract between each other. And that contract's really important because that's gonna define not only how do we count the money when times are good and what are our roles and responsibilities and how do we make decisions, but also what about when things are bad or if someone uh, dies or disability or, or other sort of unfortunate circumstances. So we can lay, lay all that out. All right, my, my next question, I think I'm on number four, is what are the citizenships? And the reason I ask is, is not so much because you can't do it if you're a foreigner, it's because if you're a foreigner, there's extra things you need to do. And there's limitations on how you can be taxed. So the guy in Washington State, he's like, oh, I'm a US citizen and my wife's a US citizen. So, okay, great. Uh, and by the way, citizen or permanent resident is treated basically the same way by the IRS. So it's it, it, what I'm thinking about is someone who's not a citizen, not a permanent resident, or here on some sort of limited visa. Um, okay, so the next question I'm gonna ask is, have you thought about LLC versus corporation? Most of the time people are like, I want an LLC, and they don't even know why. 
And so we can talk about the differences and I'll do a video or if I haven't already talking about re really the differences between an LLC and a corporation. Suffice it to say, Deirdre Nero's law firm is an LLC. Eric Rodebois' law firm is a corporation. To our customers, our employees, our landlords, to everyone basically, it doesn't make a difference. It really only matters between the owners and the laws they have to follow and with the uh, government for taxes. And the last question coming up on five minutes is how is the company going to be taxed? And most, time, most of the time people know and they're like, I want it to be an S Corp. And a lot of times they have no idea. And I'm like, okay, let's talk about our options. So guys, those are the steps. Those are the questions we ask when we're setting up a company. As we work through those questions, we answer them, we can figure it out and we can say, okay, we're going to have a multi-member Delaware LLC registered to business in Florida with an operating agreement because there's multiple owners and we're going to have it taxed as an S Corp because everyone's a U.S. citizen. Um, okay, guys, if you have any questions, obviously a lot to unravel there. Give me a call, Eric Rodebois.